Hey everybody, welcome to another Double Tap on YouTube. I am Stephen Scott. And I am Sean Brees. Hello. Hello. Nice to be back with you and uh, nice to be back here on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. I've become one of them now, Sean. I'm one of those you forgot, people. You forgot to hit that bell. I don't know what that means, but no, hit that either. bell. I think it gives you notifications because I hit that bell. And what happened oh. was I got a notification when a new video arrived from this channel. And that's exactly what it does. Well done. You were taking it very serious there. Yes, hit that mm. bell for notifications. Yeah, that's apparently what it I means. Don't know. I mean, I must admit, every single person who probably watches this video knows exactly what that is, and I've just discovered it. <laughs> uh, but it's okay, guys. I understand. I am a hero. We're new. And, uh, we're, yeah. le we're learning. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so today I want to talk about something. I'll be honest with you. This just gets my goat. Oh, okay. Uh, not that I have a goat, but if, if I had a goat, it would be got. I was going to go there, but I decided mm. to leave that alone because I thought, why waste time? Let's just get straight into it. But I'm glad you went there instead. Why waste time? Exactly. It's double tap. You don't do that. <laughs> uh, no, look, I'll tell you what gets my go. I, I'm getting a little bit tired of the constant, every day it feels like there's another announcement about a new replacement for the cane or a replacement for the guide dog. I'm sorry, guys. Please, enough. Enough with the robot Canes and the robot guide dogs, please. Wow, I'm what's the matter with of you? This. Embrace the tech. I mean, I... This, this, technology has the solution for our mobility needs, sir. Why are well, you stuck the in the past? The solution requires there to be a problem, and I don't know <laughs> if there is a problem with my cane or my guide. I don't have a guide dog, but and that's mm. part of the reason why mm. we'll talk about this. Part of the reason why some of these products exist, I know, but. I do want to get into this because I just I, I feel that there's a lot of companies out there who think there's a way to make this product smart. And we've seen various examples over the years. And I, I really I, I wish them well for trying because I think one day there might be a solution that just pops up that we all go, yes, that's the one. But I don't think it's there yet. And I think it's because of the implementation. I think the smart way to do this is to stop thinking about replacing the cane or the dog and look at technology that can enhance the experience around you, can give you added information in a clear, concise way. And, and the, the reality is, for me, it already exists. And I'll tell you where it comes from. It comes from apps like Soundscape. It comes from this new app that we've been trying out called WaveOut from Dreamwaves, uh, yeah. which uses spatial audio for navigation, which is coming through my regular Meta Ray-Ban glasses or any audio glasses or AirPods or whatever. You know, it gives you that spatial navigation. That, to me, is a, a good way of giving you additional information relevant to what you're looking for whilst using safely your white cane or your guide dog. I think it's a problem or a solution, I should say, looking for a problem. Okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me think about this one. I agree. At, at the risk of alienating every um, assistive tech manufacturer we've ever spoken to yeah i'm not trying to interview think... you ever again i know that but, you know. <laughs> exactly That's when okay. it comes to m mobility aids I i'm thinking of the, the the attempts that have been made so far to improve the white cane for example mm -hmm. have any of them improved it have any of them worked have any of them become successful i'll be honest with you i can't think of any which has made people well, go you know what that is better than just the standard cane I think it's hard to it's hard to quantify that because there are products out there that have been around for a long time. There's one in particular called the Ultra Cane, which has yes. been around for a long, long time. I remember going out for the very first time to one of my first Sight and Sound, as it was then. I think exhibitions now, of course, known as Sight Village in the UK. And you know, I remember going to that and and thinking, wow, this this cane is amazing. I tried the Ultra Cane, was kind of impressed, intrigued more by it than anything else. But the price point just put me right off. I thought I can't afford that so it wasn't something i was ever going to buy and then we saw years later products like the we walk come along and yes. now people are obviously buying them because they're still in business at least that's the way i look at it it must there must be a success there so if you want to quantify success well i guess you could say well yeah. these companies are still there they're still innovating but well I... yes look look a lot of people buy this technology to try this technology out because it is intriguing it is we are curious to see how this could benefit us. The question I have is how many people, blind people that is, mm. are actually using this tech continuously? Haven't just tried it out and you know what, okay, that's interesting, let's see what happens with it and then don't touch it again. 
Now, you had the chance while we were over in uh, Vienna at the C at the CES, <laughs> CES in the brief, at um, the Zero Project Zero Conference. Project. Yes. yes. You can tell I'm still jet-lagged from my two-hour flight. Yeah. Uh, yes. But uh, <laughs> we were in Vienna for Zero Project. You got the chance to try out Dot Lumen's device, which is uh, coming to market soon. It's still at kind of prototype stage, but it's almost at final version. Um, and you get the chance to navigate around. Talk us through how this thing works and uh, talk us through your experience with it. Okay, and I, I think this is actually this technology is why we are intrigued to see if tech can help us with our mobility needs as blind people. Because basically what this is, this takes all the sensors, you know, the cameras, the LIDAR, whatever else it may be, processing power off a self-driving car. So something like a Tesla or a Waymo and shrinks it all down and puts it into a wearable, in the case of the Lumin, headset. So using that technology, which we've all been so impressed about when it comes to driverless cars, using it as a pedestrian and wearing it on our own bodies. So in the case of the Lumin, this is a headset, and they keep referring to it as glasses, which I don't quite understand because that, that is, it's definitely not. This sits across your forehead, and it is like a headband, so it goes around the back of your head. That houses the battery and other processors at the back. And at the front is a series of cameras and, you know, LiDAR sensors and things like that. So using this, um, it, it guides you around by vibrating on your forehead. So if you feel a vibration towards the right-hand side of your forehead, that's telling you that's the safe way. That's the clear path to take. So as you turn towards it, that vibration moves across your forehead. And when it's in the center, that's when you start walking. So it has a bit of a soundscape feel to it with the 3D mm. audio um, beacons, you know. If you hear a beacon on your left-hand side, that's where you know it is. It's mapped in 3D space. It's the same thing, but it uses haptic feedback across your forehead. And I, I, look, I know that sounds weird, but it actually works pretty well in getting that across to you. So that's the basics of it. And yes, I did get a chance to try it out whilst at Vienna at the Zero Project. But I've got to say, you know, this is so important. A two-minute walkabout in a corridor is so different from a commute that you may take, you know, five times a week going across a busy train station or whatever in the real world. It's completely different. So it's so hard to get a feel and to be able to say, you know what, this is the future, this works. But I will say, as that limited experience... I was quite impressed by it. Yeah, I mean, it worked. People were work, uh, walking in front of me and straight away the vibration would stop to tell me to stop. And I did. And then when they moved out of my way, it would start again and I could walk on and it would you know, give me a vibration on a different direction to tell me which way to navigate around an obstacle. So very, very good in concept. But what it comes down to is, do I trust it? And... What what objects out in the real world will it detect? And will it get confused? I don't know. Only time will tell. But as a concept, like all of these things, again, as you mentioned, I'm intrigued. I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, I'm intrigued by the technology, but I just feel it goes after the wrong market. I mean, in fairness to Dot Lumen, what they're saying is, look, there are a significant lack of guide dogs available out there for blind and low vision people. There are a lot of blind people like me who don't necessarily want to have a guide dog because of the responsibilities and challenges that a dog can bring. And in my case, for example, I don't go out enough to even justify having a guide dog. That's according to guide well, dogs themselves. So There's also allergies you know, yes. and other, other factors, which means that people can't actually have a guide dog. But the answer to that would be the white cane. And I think I, I, think I know where this comes from. This comes from a lot of people who use a white cane, especially guide dog owners, who have to go back to the white cane once their dog retires and there's that wait period to get a new dog. Yeah. I, I see a lot of these people on social media saying, oh, God, back to the white cane again. Oh, I hate the white cane. Oh, it makes it so slow in comparison <laughs> to a guide dog and it's just not the same. And I've got to find obstacles rather than avoid them. And it's like, yeah, but that's the point of the, the white cane. So don't do it down. Don't do the white cane down. And, and I, this is, I, I wonder if this is where the psyche comes from for, for people who watch these kind of videos and go, okay, that's interesting. So, so the white cane is not great, according to these people. So um, perhaps we should come up with something else. I wonder if that's the psyche. 
let's tech up the guide dog. I, I don't know. Look, I've, I've or seen the cane, those... right? I've seen, well, yeah, but I've seen those responses as well of, of people waiting for guide dogs and they, they really miss the guide dog. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that would reflect at all on, on uh, the um, opinions of developers or manufacturers. I, th I think they are just looking for... They've got this tech here, which is so impressive, and they're looking of a way to implement it to... I, I think their intentions are, are good. No, no, yeah, I don't doubt that, but, but, I don't, but where are the ideas oh, yeah, coming I'm, from? I'm, I don't I understand where the blame. ideas are coming from because no one's just waking up in the middle of the night and saying, do you know what we need? We need one of those canes for those blind people so they can get around. And, you know, it's like a broomstick. You can sit on it and it'll <laughs> geolocate itself off to space. You know, I don't think anybody's waking up thinking that. It must be coming from somewhere, right? People must be coming up with these ideas well, yeah, based on some kind of conversation. Everyone is trying to implement smartness into everything. So I think tech is is the the the, the want to techify every single thing is there. And for some, sometimes for good reason, sometimes, you know, simpler, as simple is better. Mm. And I think that is the case for the cane. I honestly, I, I, look, I think of the Wii Walk, and I'm not zeroing in on that specifically, but in this case I am. Uh, you can't use it in the rain. Yeah. I mean, sorry, but what? Uh, 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 so Doesn't I can only Scotland go out or when it's sunny. Right? <laughs> I mean, the tech is then dragging that stick down. The usefulness of that white cane is now less yeah. than without the tech. I'm sorry, that makes it pointless for me. So, okay, but let's say they fix that. Again, the point being is that, so. okay, they've, they come out with a new version and suddenly it's perfectly fine in the rain. The problem is still the same, which is you're coming up with a device... And again, this is not on WeWalk specifically. This is on all manufacturers of all these devices. Yes, Anybody let's make that who's, clear. Yeah. And I, I am being very specific about this because you know, it's not one company. And the problem is it's not unique to white canes or guide dogs either. I see this, you know, where someone's developed like some kind of toilet seat design thing that you wear around your neck <laughs> that has, you know, I don't know, lasers shooting out of it to tell you which way to walk or a belt. I saw once there was a belt that was available. I just, oh, come on. I mean, this, what, what's the point of all this? And why is all this money being spent on this stuff that nobody's buying? Well, nobody's buying because it is so expensive in the first place, I would argue. Yeah. But let's, let's roll back on that because when we were talking about the Lumen uh, at Zero Project, we did meet someone, someone did come up to us, and they said they used the belt version. Now, I can't exactly remember the, is it the Navi belt? But that is, it, basically, it's the same concept using cameras and LiDAR sensors, uh, you know, the same hardware, same tech from a self-driving car. But this time, it was you wore it around your waist, and it did the similar, similar thing. Now, I'm pretty sure that person said, it's a game changer for me. Mm. So, so, you know, this tech obviously does have some use for some people. I'll bet I, money that mm -hmm. these devices are bought and end up lying in a cupboard gathering dust in a year. I kind of agree with you. I think that takes us back to the start. I, I kind of agree with you. I, I'm really interested because I'm just a bit of a nerdy geek, which so much so many of us are anyway. I, I love tech. I love I, it. Look, we do I, a show want... about tech, allegedly. <laughs> and you I know, want I, this I, stuff to exactly. be techified. Yeah. Well, I don't. But that. Well, I don't know if I do. And I think this is the point. I kind of wish. And this is, this is maybe on organisations, this is maybe on us as a community, I don't know. But I think there's so few of us out there actually speaking up that sometimes solutions are brought in. I see this all the time in our world. Solutions for things that I think, well, what do we need that for? You know, no one asked for this. And suddenly that we're being asked to spend thousands of dollars on a product nobody asked for to almost beta test it for a company in the vain hope that it actually works. And, you know, the, the technology falls by the wayside and we are suddenly, you know, thousands of dollars out of pocket. I just think there's, there's got to be a better way of doing this. I don't know what the answer is. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think charities I... should be involved in it necessarily because I don't think that's their responsibility. But I think that there has to be a way of doing this. I mean, I suppose every company in the world has to start somewhere. Every product idea has to start from somewhere. But, you know, I think the biggest mistake that they make, a lot of these companies, and, not, I'm not, and again, I'm not pinning on anyone, but I think a lot of these companies tend to build a product first and then go to the community and say, here's a great idea, what do you think? And everyone goes, mm, it's all right, yeah. And then, you know, you either get <laughs> a terrible reaction to it 
or you get a brilliant reaction to it and then nobody buys it or everybody does buy it and no one uses it. And and then we get to go back around yeah. in circles again. And I just don't I think it's like it's a weird kind of sense of capitalism going on here, right? It's like no one no one's asking for this stuff, but suddenly we're being offered it and then some people might buy it and say it's great. But I I, I still am convinced that, that person will find a better way of navigating around using a white cane or dog. If they No, I mean I think there's some people who think that the solution here is to get away from that device so that you could walk around unaided. I think that's the that's I think partly the dream for a lot of people who are low vision. What do you mean? What they do cannot, you mean by they, device? They kind of don't want the cane. They don't want a cane ah, or dog. Right. So that okay. for a device like this, they can move around with their toilet seat around their head or their belt on or whatever it is, yes. and they can navigate around. <laughs> we should say the toilet seat is again using the uh, self-driving car technology. This time you wear it's a it around your neck. Self-driving toilet seat. That's basically it, it what it is. It does look like a toilet seat. It does yes. look like a toilet seat. You wear it like a wreath uh, around your neck. Um, you do. The wreath of navigation. Um, <laughs> you, you can use that in your marketing if and you like. Fashion I'm, death. I'm quite happy with yes. That. Yes. <laughs> fashion <laughs> death. <laughs> but I, I just think there's, there's got to be a better way of doing this. And I think it's partly just by talking to blind people, right? Just getting a group of us together and saying, do people want this stuff before you even build it? Because I think if you did do that, a lot of these products would never make it to market and actually something better might come out, something actually usable. Because I, what I want to know from wow. our comments, because I know people will comment on this and they'll, they'll shout and scream at me for saying all this stuff, but what I want to hear from you is what device would you want? If manufacturers are listening to this, or, or let's say there's someone watching this video who's been really keen on building a product, desperately keen to build something to enhance the blind people's lives. Okay, well, what, what is it we want? What do we actually want in our lives that would make a difference? Sean Priest. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, look, the biggest issue, I think, for most visually impaired people is getting around. It is mobility. So uh, I think, you know, all this work that's going on, even though, you know, we, we, we joke about the toilet seat and, uh, you know, some of this. There's some a dog this, that the, can talk to you, apparently. Bodies. You remember this uh, one? Yeah. yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a suitcase that can guide you around as there was well. A, that's right. There was a suitcase that you could sit on that would take you around. I mean, come on. I actually just... like the sound of that. That um, sounds good, but yeah. <laughs> but look, like you said right at the start of this discussion, you mentioned about uh, you're not against the, the these uh, these pieces of tech, these devices actually being developed. But I think these are stepping stones. If we don't do this, are we ever going to reach a point where, you know what, I've got this device that works? And yes, I do want something to help with mobility. I agree. I don't think we're ever going to get away from something like a guide dog or a white cane because of the, the confidence that it gives you. I don't care how smart AI gets. It's never going to be a guide dog ever. So I, I think... Um, I, I want well, something we'll, that's we'll an see aid on that. to we what will, I use. We'll see on that one. I'm not entirely convinced about that. I think I'm there not might in my be... lifetime. No way. Mm, ah, come on. Are you kidding me? Ah, come on. There was the, there was the, the Will Smith eating spaghetti. And, uh, you know, with a, he was eating <laughs> half his hands and half his face in that video a year ago. And now yeah. they've, they've made, you know, such an improvement in, in video creation. You don't think they're going to figure out how they can flip that and actually make it possible for us to you know, actually assess video as we walk around. I, I think I think that's going to be no, actually no, no. more impressive down the line. But I think, again, that's an aid in addition to. My, my issue here is let's get something that, first of all, talk to blind people. I know this is a whole unique idea, but actually <laughs> talk to blind, not three or four, like not just get like four people in a room and say, oh, well, one was female and one was male and one was this. You know, just get a bunch of people in a room. And, and say, do here, session try this after session, different parts of the world or different parts of the country or whatever. Ask people what they think and get a real sense because you, you cannot, I mean, it, it's like watching Shark Tank or Apprentice or, you know, Dragon's Den or any of these shows, you know, it's just like they ask three people and they all say it's terrible and then they say, oh, let's build it anyway. And it's not going to work. It's no good to you. It's no good to anybody else. And it just wastes our time and we actually get away from the, the thing that we maybe want. So question is today, what is it you want? Wow. What's, the, what's the gadget or technology that would make a difference to you and how would that work in navigation terms you know if it was a navigation device say i have intrigued in your comments like comment subscribe bells whatever else and we'll catch <laughs> you again next time thank you goodbye thank you